welcome you all to this uh, uh, module which i think it's a very important module which we are going to go through this module is all about uh, crew uh, crm so called crew resource uh, management uh, over a period of years uh, there has been a felt need to introduce the concepts of uh, crew resource uh, uh, management um earlier the thought was it is applicable only to the pilots and people who are directly involved in operations but over a period of time it has been realized that almost everybody who is involved in in operations including the maintenance staff and the technicians and the commercial staff uh, sometimes uh, uh, the ops staff uh, working in the office they also need to understand the concepts of crm so it is a one whole system systemic approach which we need to take on crm and therefore the subject has evolved over a period of time and we are going to learn this in great detail what's the need uh, for uh, a, d a detailed and elaborate uh, study on the subject called uh, crm the analysis of all several accidents and incidents in the past uh, uh, had made some compelling observations on the causes of the accident the main uh, some of them uh, and highlighted ones are ineffective communication amongst the uh, crew that means the copilot noticed uh, some flaws but he did not communicate it to the captain effectively or the captain he, he intended to do something but he did not uh, communicate it uh, properly to the copilot and inadequate leadership by some of the captains that means he is inadequate uh, leadership in the sense he is he is not able to give directions to different crew Uh, members if there were some uh, cabin crew uh, help that was uh, could have been taken he could not take it or he did not pass instructions clearly to the copilot uh, uh, to extract some help or information from him and poor group decision making because of ineffective communication the uh, they are unable to take a, a decisive uh, uh, an action for uh, to tackle an emergency uh, situation also it is felt that uh, in several situations the captain or the crew could have taken help of the air traffic control or uh, or in some cases they unnecessarily hurried up through the situation uh, leading to an accident uh, or they concentrated too much on a particular uh, uh, phase of the flight or particular cause that they totally neglected something else the actual flying of the aircraft which uh, led to an accident so it's it's that which uh, which led us to uh, uh, developing this subject or developing this uh, crew resource management and different concepts uh, which we are going to learn in the year 1986 uh, international civil aviation organization uh, passed a resolution on on the subject to improve the safety in aviation by making states more aware and responsive to the importance of human factors in civil aviation operations through the provision of practical human factors material and measures developed on the basis of experience in different states what it actually means is that uh, uh, it almost uh, directed the member states to incorporate the human factors uh, in in a formal training uh, program i've just uh, sh shown here that uh, several accidents incidents analysis reveals 
that 70% of the um, accidents take place due to non-technical uh, reasons and uh, uh, CRM uh, requirements uh, being one of the most important and uh, that's why we are studying the subject in detail. Okay, um, the evolution of CRM is something which we need to understand. The first generation CRM concepts were developed by the United Airlines in uh, 1981. The focus was on uh, psychological testing, leadership and interpersonal skills. It also recognized that training was not a single event and needed periodic uh, 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 recurrent uh, training. But uh, there were reluctance there was reluctance among pilots to accept uh, the training program and uh, so uh, it needed further modification probably so the crm training requirements uh, required further modification and by 1986 uh, new thoughts and uh, new ideas led to the second generation CRM training. By then, uh, uh, airlines had gained a fairly good amount of experience and slowly the need for the training had got percolated and probably it got more and more uh, acceptance amongst the users uh, 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 such as pilots and other uh, people. In 1986, NASA also conducted a workshop uh, on CRM training and several points had emerged out of that workshop. That is the CRM would get embedded in the basic training. The crew and crew, it was no more uh, cockpit resource management and it's, it's crew and in there was a holistic view that has been uh, uh, taken for this training. There were additional concepts, concepts of briefing strategies and situational awareness, stress management, team building, etc. that uh, uh, emerged and gradually uh, the second generation CRM training uh, found more and more acceptance by the air crew. By the year 1990, uh, the training concepts had further evolved and the third generation of uh, training concepts had uh, become more concrete and the highlights are that CRM training got integrated with the technical training. That means when the pilot undergoes the initial type rating training itself there were several CRM con concepts such as uh, task sharing etc had been uh, embedded in either the technical uh, uh, notes uh, by the manufacturer or the training procedures by the training uh, institutions uh, and uh, systems had been evolved. CRM issues addressed uh, flight deck automation. Uh, it was found uh, that a flight deck automation led to a little bit of confusion. So, uh, so a little bit of address of those automation issues has already been uh, made. Then, of course, human factors constituted one of the most uh, important uh, factors. So, it got extended to the other crew and personnel also. So, uh, there was a felt need to have joint uh, uh, CRM training between the cockpit crew, cabin crew and nowadays further evolved, evolved into an entire set of uh, personnel involved in the aviation and which is giving rise to advanced uh, CRM training concepts. Uh, now again uh, another 20 years uh, down the line we have evolved and now it is much more mature in its stage which is the fourth generation tra CRM training concepts. Now it integrates CRM and regular procedures, concept of uh, advanced qualification programs, integrate CRM and loft training into technical training, 
airlines could voluntarily adapt uh, aqp i i will explain these uh, in, in a, a later uh, lesson and it could integrate crm into checklists and uh, effectiveness evaluation procedure is also uh, that means effectiveness of crm training could be evaluated for its uh, for and any changes can be incorporated that's what the uh, this one means uh, uh, there is a structured syllabus which has been evolved uh, over a uh, period of time but not necessarily limited to the particular um, uh, syllabus what we have defined it encompasses much more uh, functions and the philosophy of the crm has to be achieved over a period of time in terms of uh, airline culture and uh, airline working environment etc etc so i will not uh, dwell too much at this stage uh, i will just briefly introduce to the different uh, structured syllabuses that are uh, being covered in this module so that we get a fair idea of what is uh, to follow in this uh, module firstly uh, communication which is the most important and it has also been one of the most important factors that is interpersonal communication uh, and drawback drawbacks thereof had led to many accidents so now uh, the concept of communication is what we are going to learn uh, here of course i have given a definition but at this stage it's not important we are going to learn this communication uh, a cockpit communication communication with respect to uh, aviation and communication within the organization um, information flows uh, top down and bottom up all these are very very important concepts that we shall be learning in this communication uh, sub module Okay. Uh, as CRM concepts evolved, we learned that uh, uh, there was a lack of uh, leadership training to the captains, and uh, of course, uh, uh, let's not go over uh, the um, um, definition per se. But what uh, what I wish to highlight is we are going to learn about the concepts of leadership and how to develop leadership qualities and. Uh, why it is important to a captain to carry his crew and especially how it helps in tackling emergent situations in a much more efficient uh, uh, manner so of course here uh, there is a, a, a definition which has uh, uh, which has been given uh, we are going to learn this in greater detail when we come to the leadership sub module every uh, situation in the plane uh, requires that the captain needs to take a decision on the future course uh, uh, of action that it's uh, he has to take therefore decision making um, is one of the very important concepts that we need to understand uh, uh, lack of clarity in such concepts also had led to several accidents and which is what has led us to uh, Uh, to realize that a uh, study on the subject or impart training on the subject uh, to the crew uh, is important uh, and this is what uh, is another sub module is going to cover that is decision making processes and aeronautical decision making and its nuances thereof Uh, error uh, management is another important uh, sub module which we will learn errors and mistakes um, uh, why some uh, why anyone will make an error sometimes it's a deliberate error deliberate mistake or uh, due uh, lack of knowledge and lack of training uh, there are several possibilities which lead to uh, human beings making 
errors or taking incorrect decisions. So such factors analyzed uh, and studied and rectification actions if it has been incorporated in the systems uh, leads to lesser and lesser error uh, making by uh, 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 the crew. Situational awareness is another important uh, concept that, uh, that uh, we will learn. Uh, situational awareness is very simple to uh, develop an overall understanding of the situations. That means if there has been an issue or a small uh, emergency uh, or, or a problem that has to be tackled, the, you, we don't have to spend our entire effort directing to tackle the um, emergency alone because somebody has to look after flying the aircraft also. You may recall that in one of the uh, incidents uh, or accidents in which uh, the uh, aircraft, uh, the undercarriage of the aircraft failed to come down and both the captain and co-pilot were so involved in trying to uh, address that issue that they clearly lacked uh, 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 knowledge on what the aircraft is doing and aircraft got into a gradual descent and it went into a controlled flight into terrain and the aircraft crashed. So uh, uh, these, uh, these uh, concepts uh, have evolved and the need to learn situational awareness as a concept and task dividing etc has been evolved and which we, we will learn is another sub module. Okay, stress and fatigue is another subject which uh, we will learn. Mm, uh, this is also important uh, since the, the nature of uh, job itself is uh, fairly uh, stressful, especially in, in critical phases. And if the stress is prolonged over a long period, then leads to fatigue uh, without unknowingly uh, to the crew. Therefore, uh, a study um, on the subject will help understand about their own status of stress and fatigue by uh, individuals themselves and they will be able to take uh, uh, rectification uh, actions if need be. So uh, we are going to study stress and fatigue as well. Of course, the final objective is that the entire machinery, the entire operations machinery is uh, should work like a, uh, you know, smooth oiled uh, machine and uh, everyone should be very clear on his, his uh, status, his authority, his status and his uh, responsibilities and his task. Uh, uh, so if that is achieved, then which will, uh, help the organization in achieving uh, accident incident free flying uh, 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 very high records of an accident and incident uh, free flying. This is important. Uh, so uh, one doesn't have to uh, stress too much on the importance of uh, a CRM training. It is important and uh, nowadays uh, every airline has a structured training program. So, which uh, uh, we will uh, learn each uh, sub module in little bit more detail. Okay, I thank you all for going through the lesson and this is just an introduction to the subject called uh, crew resource management or cockpit resource management which was earlier called. Uh, we have lots to learn, we have lots to develop understanding and an airline re needs robust training mechanisms uh, uh, on the subject. Uh, so the philosophy percolates uh, down at, uh, to every person, every person uh, in the organization uh, which surely it's going to result in accident and incident uh, free flying because it is going to help improve awareness 
in every person in the airline every person in the airline is going to understand uh, the need uh, and what is his responsibility and what how he can contribute i thank you all for uh, going through the uh, uh, lesson and i am sure by following the other modules you are going to benefit uh, as much uh, as and uh, find the pleasure in going through uh, the lesson and as much in as i take pleasure in presenting these uh, lessons thank you all once again please feel free uh, to uh, address any issues which you want me to clarify on the mail id given below and i request you all to follow my website as well thank you once again